गाइस वेलकम टू सेलेनियम विथ जाभा जून 2022 बैच ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग सेशन नाइन सो इन द एट सेशन आई ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड टेस्ट एन जी एंड यू ऑलरेडी गेट टू नो व्हाट इज टेस्ट एन जी फ्रेमवर्क ऑल अबाउट व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट एनोटेशन अवेलेबल राइट हा काइंड ऑफ हाउ यू कैन रन ए मल्टीपल टेस्ट केसेस सॉरी टेस्ट केसेस मल्टीपल टाइम्स with the help of invocation count method what is hard assertion and soft assertion like that right so today we will complete the remaining uh, functionality of the test ng like how to include and exclude group during the execution of the test ng what is parameterization right how to execute only fail test cases with or without listener class what is data provider in test ng what are listeners in test ng and how we can do like parallel test execution in selenium web driver using test ng so in the i think whenever we started the test ng that one of the most important advantage was the grouping feature right so in case you are having 100 test cases but definitely you will be not be running all the test cases all the time right suppose say out of which 10 test cases might be for your mock shoot right 20 test cases must be from functional shoot 30 test cases regression 20 test cases integration right that way you can uh, uh, testing type uh, uh, wise you can divide the uh, test cases right apart from that you can divide the test cases based on the critical the severity based on the application like application a b c d like that so whenever your particular application is impacted or you need to run only the regression suit or the mooc suit you can just run it based on the group name already provided in the test case test cases right so it will be only one time activity for groupies groupiesing of the test cases but then based on the group right you will benefit for the live long okay so groups in test ng denotes the process of grouping different test case or test method together into a straight forward group and running this test or method together by just running the group in a single command through this test methods are belonging to different classes right in a group can be belong to the different classes as well but right it will be run based on the group you are maintaining in the test ng dot xml file so in the last session you already see right how to convert a uh, project to the test ng project and how to generate the test ng dot xml file and how with the help of test ng dot xml file you can able to run multiple test cases from the single package as well as the multiple packages so grouping test in another very good feature of test ng by using which user can create group of test method user can create group of test method based on functionality and features or based on the module or based on the testing type like functional regression mock testing mentioned and suppose based on the critical severity also right suppose say critical de means suppose say you can give the critical as a high medium minor so definitely sometime you know only want to execute the high test case so you can just execute the high only based on the tag right or the group you are providing so this way user can differentiate specific group test method from all the test method so group are specified in the test ng dot xml file and can be used either under the tag so group specified in uh, the tags i will be showing you how we can apply the group so that's why you can just create the group right at the rate test you can use group equal to third bracket second second bracket and you can group multiple group as well so here you could see in the uh today i have created a, a test ng class right which is nothing but the test ng 9 right that is the class and here i have created multiple test cases four test cases one is method 1 then method 2 method 3 and method 4 right this test method 4 this is the four method and just simply just i am trying to output uh, print out something and here i have tried to include group right so this is the group is suppose say uh, uit test and mooc test this th uh, test method through will run for whenever it is matching with integration test test application 3 regression test right test method 2 will be test application 2 and mooc test whereas test method 1 will be test application 1 and regression test so that are the way right you can create the group similar way just you need to write the test cases and then you need to uh, uh, add that word in case only one group will be there so only one group in case multiple group in comma with comma separated you can add the multiple group so that is the way right under the test annotation you can create the group so for every test cases right you can add the group so it will be one time activity you need to identify from which group it can fall the next thing is that if you want to run those test cases right how you can associate it in the test in the xml file yeah some questions
no 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 it is it is group is method level right for the method we are add, adding the group but not for the group to the method right for no no that is the way i am telling it right so group will be for your method level for the method you are adding the group but for the no group you are not creating the method so vice versa might be problem okay so for the method you are you can add the group under the add the test annotation not the vice versa yeah Yeah, right, 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 yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. Test, yeah, at the right test cases level, we will add the group, right. Yes, right, right. Here you can add the regression or maybe only smook test like that, okay. So that's why you are just adding the group. The next thing is that, right, you cannot run it right from here. So you need to update your testengine.xml file accordingly. So how you can update it? So whenever you are adding the group, right? So in the test engine XML file, we last uh, last day we have created whenever we are converting the project, right? So if you open the test engine XML file, so that is the test engine XML file in the project level. So we can customize our uh, test name, right? Suit name like that, and we can also change that which test cases we want to execute it, right? It will be package name dot the class name. Okay. So here our test case name is test engine session nine. So definitely right now I want to run only this, that particular test cases. So I need to update it accordingly. So what is my package name? Package name is training, right? So that is the thing I want to up, up execute. Let's come and remove that one right now. Only I am focusing, right? Uh, test ng. It will be uh, that class name. I can take it simply. So training name, package name. What is the package name? Training is common, and then class name I can use it first. We can update our testing.xml file class name. Multiple classes you can use under the classes tag. Okay. So I will see the test right test name. Suppose say now I can change to testing group today. Whatever is relevant required, right? Testing group. Similar so test name I can run it right. Testing test uh, testing group suit. So automatically whenever test case will be executed, it will be run like that, right? After that, test name you need to add that group tag and then run tag, right? So that is the tag you need to use. Add it. <coughs> so you no need to remember anything. Just you can refer my slide, and that is the tag you can just simply add it. Group and then run and include name, and you need to end with run and group, right? So under the test, that under that one you need to add this tag. And then here you need to include the name whatever group you want to execute it, right? Instead of group one. So suppose I want to execute my smoke suit, right? So you can simply run it here, add it here. And now you need to run it from the test engine XML file, right? But that group will not be run from the test cases level. It will run always. You need to run it from the test engine XML file. Now let's run it with the help of test engine test. In the last day I already showed you how. In case you want to run the test case from the test case level, it will be test engine test. But from the test engine XML file, it will be always test engine suit, because the objective of the test engine file is that we'll be running multiple test cases at the same time from the multiple classes and from the multiple packages. Yeah. So if you now if you run it right with the help of the group name, so here all the test cases will not run. So whatever group it is matching, right, smook suit, those test cases will try to filter out first, and those test cases will try to run it, and definitely based on the outcome, it will pass or fail the test case. That is different story altogether, right? Here you could see, right? What is my suit name? Test ng group suit, right? That is the thing it's taking. What is your test name? That is the test name it is taking. Now based on the group include groups mook test, right? How many test cases is running from where? It is running from training dot test ng dot test ng session nine classes training packages. You could see method two got run, method two and method four. Now let's go to the class level and let's see, right? Mook suit where it is mapping. So for, for, for the past test cases, method one, right? It is not matching. There is no group called mook suit, mook test. And if you go to the test method two, it is here, right? You could see the mook test is there, right? And then you can have right here for the method three, there is mook no mook suit group, right? 
and the method for the smoke should group is there so that's why right to method 2 and method 4 is getting run and you could see the output also similar way right not all the method is getting run so that is the beauty right i will definitely i, I don't want to run execute all the discussion because suppose there is 10 application right and maybe only one application some impact has been made minimal one so definitely i want to run that application i don't want to execute all the other application let discuss i don't want to spend much time in case you want to run your kind of mooc suit right so that you can run only the mooc suit right there is no point of running the regression suit other suit right then that is the way you can include it right but if you want to include a multiple group right how can you do that so you can just copy it right and then you can paste it here so instead of mooc suit i want to run mooc suit apart from that i want to run something called other suit as well right so suppose say you want to run mooc and regression at the same time so you can give the tag as well both the tag like that right so include and include so both the now both the thing will be running it right whatever is matching either with as mooc suit that will be running whatever is matching with other regression suit that will be also running so that's so that's the way right you can include multiple groups right so that automatically based on the multiple group whatever you are entering in the test and xml file it will be automatically filter out and based on the filter result right you will try to execute the test and xml file with the help of test and xml file now you could see there are four method got run right because for the regression test right might be there are two test cases associated this is the test case associated and this is the other test case also three as well associated and for the mooc test these are the two test cases associated now four test cases got run then next question is that suppose say you are having all the related here yeah, thing right but here my objective will be that i don't suppose say you are having 10 application right or maybe you are having the priority called high medium severity so or critical so definitely is not right able to mention right you want to run critical you want to run high you want to run medium so that is your condition so what you can do you can exclude low because this is the four priority so it's no need to mention three so whatever is excluding excluding low you, you can run it so here you need to run execute without mooc test mooc test right so you can simply run it without without the mooc test how can you do it so instead of include it will be exclude so wherever mooc test is there that will be not be executed and wherever mooc test is not available those test cases will be executed so that is the beauty of the include and exclude right so this is the word part right you no need to worry about that now if you run so wherever mooc test tag is associated right that, that group is associated those test cases will not be executed but remaining test cases will be executed so here test cases method 1 and method 3 will be executed 2 and 4 because the mooc test tag is there you could see the method 1 and 3 is executed right because there is no mooc suit test as the associated <coughs> you could see here right the now next question might come right suppose say you are having right something called application name called test a test b test test c right sometime you are having called app 1 app 2 app 3 app 4 but you want to run all the app related applic app, app related group app 1 2 3 4 like that wherever app is there then how can you run it or suppose say uh, kind of uh, 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 right test 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 what wherever test what is present present right test app test app 1 app present you want to run it right then how can you run it so here that is the simple thing i already mentioned in my ppt also right if you want to <coughs> run all the group with some matching keyword right same can be possible using the regular expression you need to use that then start and then sorry dot and start suppose say i want to run all my test cases where the that word is present right that word is present so it will run test application 1 2 3 wherever it is there so it will run test method 1 method 2 method 3 because in the method 4 only you have to test and the mooc test is there so that's why you can include something right so here you need to instead of the mooc test you want to define something called right that uh, test app dot then start asterisk marks so here right how easily instead of writing everything right so it, it will be include not exclude excluding yeah right excluding means so that wherever it is not present that will be excluded same way it does not have any differences but that is the way right you can simply run all the right test cases wherever the test app group is present ap that name is present so that is the beauty right that group is playing a pivotal role through which you can 
categorize yeah yes gb sorry gb sorry Uh, no, no, session 7 and 8 is already completed, right? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, it is possible, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you just need to add it, right, here in the class's name. But that should be TestNG class, right? Just like the under the class's tag, right? So, suppose you are, you, add, you want to add that one, right? So, you can just, under the class's class tag, you need to simply add it. But that should be test ng class, otherwise it will not work, right? That then that package name dot the class name. That is the simple way. So wherever it is does not matter about the class, wherever that group word will be there, it will, it will be executed from the all the relevant classes, from the all the packages under the same project. Okay. Yeah. So now you could see three test cases got run, method one, method two, and method three. Why it is running? Because that group name test tab is across the three things. Right, test one, test two, and test three. But for the test four, method four, right, there is nothing called that word. That is the result is not working. So you no need to worry about that. Just if you just re refer my only one slide, you will get the concept of the group, and then you can refer my code here, right? So include, exclude, and then like with the regular expression, you can also use it. So first you need to declare it, create the method, right? Yeah, then after you creating the method, right? Then you need to add the group here syntax. Right, multiple group you can add in case single group, uh, multiple group, comma separated part. Then in the next part is that, right, whatever test cases class you want to include it, right, you need to definitely add it in the test.xml file, right. So in case it is then, you need to add this word, right, group run that part. Here you can use include, exclude, and some exact word or something with the star marks, right, the regular expression. So that's why you can deal with the group guys so any questions guys is it clear okay so that is the way right how easily you can see right with the help of the group with the help of test engine framework right we can execute our relevant required required test cases instead of so many hurdle the next one is the test engine parameterization so first let's comment out that part so similar way you can comment it out in the test engine xml file as well right and let's comment out our test cases as well <coughs> in the parameterization suppose say let's i will try try to write some test cases like suppose say uh, like multiplication subtraction with multiple words so I already had my code here so just I'm not writing it right so you could see here so that is the t three test case I am adding right one is the addition one is the subtraction one is the multiplication this simple three test case I am adding it right so the first test case is addition where I am taking two parameter and just adding it out I am just printing it out the value summation Second test cases is subtraction. Again, right two parameter, same parameter integer one. That is called parameter here. The two parameter is same, right? Integer one, integer two. So it is just subtraction, right? The value will be integer one minus a. And another one is right multiplication. So here also I am using integer and integer two, and it is multiplying, right? So that is the simple three test cases. The next thing is that I want to use called parameterization so what is parameterization so yesterday last session i told was string there's two concept one is called parameterization one is called data provider so what is parameterization parameterization means the single parameter will be used multiple time right and definitely we will be fixing that parameter value and wherever that parameter will be called right those will be trying to get the value from the parameterization so that is called parameterization 
and data provider also will cover today so data provider means same sort of test cases will try to execute it with the help of different combination of data that is called data parameterization right so one of the important feature of testing is parameterization the features allow user to pass parameters to test as argument this is supported by using the test ng at the rate parameter annotation right the at the rate parameters annotation can be used for any of the at the rate before after test annotated method it can be used to initialize variable and use them in a class test or maybe in the whole test execution in case user need to pass some simple values such as string type to the test method at run time user can use this approach of sending parameter value through test ng dot xml configuration file as well so how fast thing is we need to do it right first thing is that we need to use add the rate parameter syntax and then you need to you give the parameter right here that is my call parameter right so it will be based on the similar right whatever method we are calling it right so here suppose say one parameter i will be typing it so it can be like uh, that syntax you can use it before or after the test it does not have any problem right you can use it before the test you can use it after the test same way it will work right so here two parameter right you could see integer one integer two so i am using data one and data two so whenever you are using at the rate parameters you need to import the parameters from the test engine that is the annotation from that in the available in the test engine parameters then again first bracket and it will start in case of multiple thing do not use it com dot buh do not use it it will be always be org dot test engine dot annotation otherwise it will be error right so here also two uh, two two parameters so i can use the same thing for the next one also here i'll be using after the test right you could see two parameters so here also it will matching right two parameter one and two the next thing right i want to parameterize for the multiplication also so it will be having three right so i can use it here after this right so so that part one part is done i have already had my test cases and then i am using the parameter concept mm -hmm. yeah that is called argument that is called argument that is the argument and here this argument i am trying to match with the parameter yeah right it will match with the right data will match with into i'll be discussing more you can after that you can get more clarity so that my first step second part is that you need to go to the test engine dot xml file right and you need to up add that point here parameter right you need to add it right so i'll be not be writing anything new here so just simply i'll be just trying to use it that one parameter is parameter part one second that part you can use it simply just copy it right and then go to the test engine dot xml file right and then you can after the suit name or after the test name you can add it right let's first add it after the test name there is a lot of concept also available so it will be parameter tag then it will be name and here you need to give that parameter right so what are the parameter name i am using data one so same thing i'll be using it right and here my value because integer right i can give suppose value called 50 right and similar way i can use the other parameter called data 2 because whatever we have mentioned it right we are not writing anything new and here i can give the value called 20 right so that is the true parameter i have provided but those parameters are calling in multiple times right multiple functions now let's try to run it and let's see so based on the parameter value how these functions are getting impacted right so that is called right declaring one time but those parameter we will be using multiple times so that is the concept of parameterization it's i will discuss more on other thing is also there <coughs>
No, it will be primitive data type only. Right? It will be primitive data type only. One second, I think some problem here. Parameter, right? Name equal to data one. Value equal to 50 and then ending with that one. Right? It is not working. Let's see what's the problem. I have already there. It should work here. Let's see data one and data two. That is the two value. <coughs> P A R A M E T A R parameter name equal to data one and value equal to fifty. Yeah, that's fine ending with that one parameter name equal to data 2 and ending with that, right? it is fine classes is also same here and ending with the classes tag so tag yes let's remove it for now only test name equal to 5 that is fine test name Let's try to run one more time. Hmm, yeah, some problem or might be there, but yeah, sometimes some problem if you run it first time might be problem, right? But next time it is working, you could see. So here now we have given data one value equal to fifty. You could see. It is a, a execution will be done based on the alphabetical order, right? You already know, right? In case you are not giving the priority. So this is your suit name, this is your group name, this is your test package dot class name, and this is the method name. You could see 50 and 20 is coming as the parameter, right? So it is 670 addition. Then multiplication based on the alphabetical order A, M, and S, right? 50 and 20 again coming in the data one, data two. So it is 1000, and subtraction 50 and 20 is coming. So it is 30. So that is the way, right? Now next question is that suppose say if I want to create one more uh, thing, right? Called uh, mm, say one more method, right? Suppose say what is the method name I can give? Addition uh, three pair, right? Three variables. Say. Okay, that is the method I can give it, right? Or addition multiple pair, multiple variable, right? So here I can give something called another thing called integer int 4, right? So here it will be like that 4, okay? So is it clear? Right? The next question is that here you are having three variable. This is called variable or the argument, okay? Do not kind of mix with that one this is the variable right or argument here this is called argument mostly this is called argument but I need to map with the parameter right so either you can create a new data data here called parameter right I can create something called data 3 right so that it is matching now right or maybe I can use the data 1 as well right because same parameter I can use it multiple time right that two value can be same also right because suppose you are working, 10 person are working for the uh, a particular team, right? Out of 10, 5 person can be tester, 2 person can be developer, 3 person can be BA like that, right? So some of the person value called same. So in case this is same, you can just copy it here. No, no need to add more parameter. But in case you are declaring new parameters, so you need to define the value also here, right? So similar way, I will be adding the value also here. Suppose say I want to keep the value called 100, like that's fine. So I need to change it to 3. Okay. So that is the way, right? Based on your uh, like method, right? You can just update your parameter. Okay. Now you can run it. <coughs> so it will be running based on the new value you have given for the data 3. Other will be remain same. So it is now your parameter value you are giving at the test level. So it is fine. Okay, you could see. 
Now four method is coming based on the alphabetical order 50 plus 20 equals 70 in the output right then uh, addition multiple pair 50 plus 20 plus 100 equal to 170 then the multiplication 1000 subtraction 30 that is the output is coming for the four method right you could see test run four failure zero here uh, for method four class test one right four pass the next question will come can we add the parameter to the suit level yes you can add it so either suit level or either test level you can add it okay so let's give it here at the suit level right and let's remove it that part so if you give the suit level also it will run the same way it does not have any problem same way it will run so it will give the same result <coughs> so what level you are giving that does not matter but in case you are giving at both the level sometime so your suit level will be skipped and your test level will take the precedence right so say I have you could see the same result right but in case you are giving both the test level and the suit level right so here let's keep the suit level value unaltered and here give it one more zero right one more zero so what value it will take now the same parameter but the different value right test level this value and suit level this value now if you want to run it right so test level value will be considered not the suit level value suit level value will be discarded so that is the way okay oh sorry <laughs> yeah that's right yeah okay let's stop it it will throw the error let's see what error it is showing <laughs> okay so definitely something we will throw here yeah you could see in case you are doing some mistake it will definitely it will uh, let you know right you could see the error right java multiple number format exception you got it right because that is the integer so number format is not matching so based on that right you can easily identify what is the problem here okay so now you can just make it zero Okay, so in case you are doing something mistake, so it will be throwing the error and definitely based on the error type you can easily articulate what the wrong thing you are doing it. So I mean it's a human being right, it does not matter if you are a 16 year person or junior person, if every human being can have some mistake and that is the reason right. So it error message will be triggered and based on the error message, so it will be based on the experience right. I can understand it right, maybe within a minutes or within hours, sometime it, for you it might take hour to a, a day itself. Yeah, based on the experience you are having, based on the thing you are running it, based on the experience you are gaining day by day, your thing will be also right. Exp expertise will be increased, and you can easily understand the error. Right now, you could see, right? The value also got changed: 500, 200 equal to 700, right? 500, 200, 1000 equal to 1700, and then the value of the multiplication, right? And then the value of the subtraction also. So that is the way it is changing, right? So in case you are giving at the both the way but your value will take on the from the test level otherwise anything will be fine so that is the way i have also run it declared it right you could see here so that are the different thing i have written it here in case you have forgot something right you can just remember it uh, just going through the one more time in the ppt right user can declare the variable at the suit level and the test level however test engine give preference uh, so the parameter defined at the test level over the parameter at the suit level. So any questions guys? Is it clear? Okay. <coughs> the next thing is that, right, sometimes, suppose say, right, some test cases might get failed, right? In case you are having, suppose say, 4 test cases, 5 test cases, 10 test cases, right? So suppose one or two test cases might be failed due to the internal error, right? right? But that is not the failure, but you want to execute them. Suppose say your eight test cases has been run, but two test cases whenever you want to run something, your internet connection got disconnected. So definitely those test cases will fail because the internet was not available, right? Sometime you want to operate with the file, but that file was open, you are not able to update the data. So that is the internal problem, but you need to figure out the problem and you need to only run the failed test case because there is all the past test case you don't need to run it because it is time consuming. So if you are giving simply 10 example, but in the real time it might be high 1000 test cases in the first run, nine, uh, 980 test cases got passed. 
and 20 days case got failed, right? So definitely I will not be running the 98, 90 test case, whatever already passed. My objective will be to run the failed test case only, right? Then how you can run it? So there is two options. One is with listener class, I will show you in the uh, right and uh, sometimes and one is without listener class. So most of the time test cases may fail while executing automated test script. The reason may be anything like network issue, element not found, timeout exception, system issue or the browser specific issue but user need to execute the test script again. So instead of running all the test script again and again, user can execute only the failed test cases again for any number of time and check the updated result. So how can you do that? So let's first fail some test cases here, right? So let's uh, use the same thing and let's give some assertion here. Let's give some hard assertion that not be a problem, right? I can use integer one. So let's fail it. So I am giving some assertion, suppose say 10 and 11. So it will not be match. Right, so it will fail, right? Now if uh, you run one test cases, so what will happen? It will fail the test case. One test case will fail because of the assertion failure. You could see one test case got failed because of the assertion failure, right? This is the test case fail. Why it is got fail? Because that is the reason, right? The reason is also there. If you select that one, if you go here, you could see assertion error. Expected 11, but coming as 10. Right? That is the test case fail. Now, say, if you run it again, what will happen? It will run all the test cases again. So, in case you are having one of the test cases, again it will run. Again, another test case got failed, right? Definitely, I don't want to uh, kind of waste my time. I want to concern only the failed test case. Again, if you run it here, you could see all the test cases will be running again. Four test cases will be run. So, in case it is 1000 test cases, it might take two to three days time to run. So, definitely it is not uh, possible to run all the again because it will take again or two or three days time. Right? So, suppose you are having only five days time to complete everything detailed result. So, if you run it again, it will be failed again. Right? So, same way it will run, it will take another time. Then our thing is that, question is that how we can run the failed test cases. So for that, just refresh the project first. <coughs> so this is without listener class. After that, I have mentioned in my PPT right where you need to go it. Right, you'll be seeing a folder called test output here. Right, in the test output folder, right, you are able to see something called, right. Um, let's what is the name here? Testng hyphen fail dot xml. Testng hyphen fail dot xml right you could able to see it here that is the file you can open it right click here and you can run as test ng suit or you can double click here so that you can basically understand right if you double click here right you could see <coughs> only the fail test case will be there in that particular test engine dot fail xml file right you could see here what is the method name it is only in addition other method name is not here right only one method name is coming right now if you run it from here only one test case will be run not all the past test case so that is the beauty of the test ng framework it's already having the inbuilt feature i am not doing anything so you will see only that addition test case will be run so you can now next time you can just fix it and you can run it so that automatically pass you could see other test case not got run, whatever pass, only whatever failed test case is there already running. Now you can fix your code, right? And definitely it will be passed now. So if you fixed your code, now if you run it from here, and if you run it from here, again four test case will be run, but if you run it from here, only your failed test case will be run, and based on the latest update, it will throw you the result. So every time it will refresh it. In case now, if you pull two test cases got failed, right? So it will update it here. If you replace it here, it will got the two test cases. Now it will only one test case run. Now it is past status. So that is the way, right? You can just run only the failed test cases instead of running all the test cases again and again. Is it clear, guys?
okay <coughs> the next part i will cover is called data provider in test ng so first was calling that covered as parameterization means multiple test cases having multi same parameter and same parameter i am uh, handling with the help of the from uh, the test ng dot xml file right and here i will show the data provider means one test case i want to run it right um, multiple times with the different data combination then how can you do it so uh, let's comment out uh, first this thing also let's comment out these test cases then I will just copy some code here say I want to run it here right so that is the called uh, chrome driver I am globally defining some driver called web driver driver right that is the global driver setting the properties and here for now let's remove it because I want to hard code it right hard code it right? so that part I can also comment it out it is not required now so hard code means suppose say I want to hard code the thing right uh, so what is the hard coding part suppose say you uh, that is the hard coded username and password will be this thing entered in the username and password fit for the Facebook page home page right so that is the line of code I have to execute it right in case you want to execute for multiple times right so what you need to do right for the same data co combination it will run with the help of the invocation count you already seen the last session right here I need to keep add the red test annotation also right now otherwise it will not consider the test case okay so that is the test cases so in case you want to run it for 10 times you can run it with the help of invocation count equal to 10 but that will be same username and password will be entered right and will quit the browser but in case you want to just vary the data right same test case will be running it but you just want to validate the data right just kind of vary the data then how can you do it so that is the reason it is called right parameterization means you are running some sort of test cases with the different variety of the data suppose in case you want to create some data right in the real time suppose say you want to create some policy right you already know in case you are working for the insurance sector so after that policy you can do some policy change cancel and renewal all this stuff right so you can take you need to generate some policy with a different combination it can be motor policy it can be home policy it can be other policy as well right so you need to create some policy with different data combination so that same same test case you can execute it but with a different combination of data right so let's see if you run it here so it will be run only one one time in case you are giving input and count will run 10 times based on the input and count you are giving but the same set of data so how you can just change the variety of the data right so here right parameterization not the parameterization data provider will come into the picture so here first thing in case you are not using any data parameterization so what it will do it will try to run your test cases based on the test case objective because you are just hard coding the value here you are hard coding everything it will enter the value username hard coded value and password it will quit the browser right so that is done but say I want to run it for three times with three different combination of data then how can you do that so first thing is that you need to call the data provider that is the annotations available data provider right so what is data provider in most of the situation user need to run scenario with different varieties of data and during that time it is not possible to write a test case for each set of the data instead of that user can use data provider which provides data in the form of an array of object to run the add the rate test multiple times with different input user can use data provider options present in test ng 
a data provider annotated method always returns an array of object which remember it can be any dimensional one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional like that right so not three one or two dimensional num number of row present in the array will be the number of iteration how many time you want to iterate it that is called number of rows and number of columns means how many argument you want to pass for how many parameter or the value or the field so that is the column here right so you could see data provider then you need to create a object method name here you need to give that uh, uh, like index right arrays uh, row and number right so two dimensional you can give it you can create a method name and row means number of time you want to run repeat the test and column means number of parameter in the test. So here in the Facebook login page, right? So you are having only uh, uh, two parameter, right? On username and password. So in case you are having three things, right? Username, password, email ID. So you can use three uh, column num column name. So it will be having three different kind of parameter for the three different field. So let's try to see use the same way, right? I'll be using the same way. Okay. So here I need data provider. After that. I need to create a method which will be public in nature, right? And then suppose say this is the object return type, and here you need to give two dimension, two dimensional array, row and column, and you need to give the method name, right? So any kind of method name you can give. Suppose say uh, get user and password. Okay, that is the method name, and then again you need to give first bucket, and then all the body will be starting on this from the second bucket. So okay, you could see some error message is coming because data provided you need to import it because this is annotation from the test engine only, right? So you could see this is coming from the org dot test engine annotation, right? And here you need to create object and then variable, right? Object because that is return type object. And then you need to give some variable name. Suppose say uh, data uh, or maybe uh, data combination. That is my variable, right? And here you need to create new object. And here you need to give third bucket, sorry, second bucket again. The first I already mentioned, right? The first is your row number of iteration you want to do. Suppose say I want to iterate for the three times, right? And this is my number of column. I need to just uh, change the value in the object name and the password field sorry password and the email field right and then here you need to create the variable right data combination and here you will be giving it row and column wise so in java everything will give go in the zero and it will go row it will go in case row size is m it will go start with zero it will go m minus one in case column size is n it will go from the zero and it will go to the l minus one and here you can give the name right so first is that your first row and column zero right first row first column means your first thing right your username so user name one right so three set but two column right two column and three iteration so second one will be your again row number zero and column number one that is called password right so suppose say password one. So similar way, I want to go for three iteration, right? So it is a uh, iteration one, and it is a iteration two, and it is a iteration three, right? So it will be iteration one, one, right? So it will be iteration two. And it will be iteration three. Here it will be row number one. Sorry, row number one, column zero. It will be row number one, column zero, and iteration two. So username two you can give it, and password two you can give it. And here it will be row number two, column zero, row number two, column one. One second. Here it will be username one, three. And password three, and then here because you are using the object library, it will be return that one variable. So here you need to add one more thing called return because you're returning the value, right? That variable value. So you need to write one more line here called return. Here, error message will be gone. 
right now you can see there is no error message so that is the reason you are returning that type and what is that type variable type the variable type is object right that is the reason access modifier the return type is object able to get it here and this is your method name so that part is done so that part through that part data provider part you are defining how many number of iteration I want to con continue right and what is my how many uh, kind of uh, field value I want to just automate it right so in case you are having email ID password and uh, user ID field so you can give column number 3 and similar way you can give right 0 1 2 and column number ok yeah arrived right no 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 it is not 3 dimensional it is 2 dimensional only but it will be uh, kind of row and column 2 dimensional why 3 dimensional row and column is right Yeah, it will always two dimensional. Here, the first row is the number of iteration, and second column is right number of variables or number of element you want to interact for every iteration, right? Parameter, number of field you want to interact and you want to enter the value. So it will be always two dimensional, right? Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah. So then next, yeah, mm. yeah. Tell me, yeah, proceed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will cover it in the next session, no worry. <laughs> so, first I will cover with the help of the that uh, hard coding part and then we will cover in the next session from the Excel part. Same code will be using it, but we will be uh, with the help of Apache PY, how you can interact it and how you can take the data from the Excel. In the next session I will be covering as part of data driven testing. So, that is the three framework available, data driven keyword and hybrid. So, here I will be using the same code, I will not change anything, but it will be from the Excel only instead of that part, data provider part, the hard coding part, whatever you are hard coding it. So that is the way slowly you can un try to simulate the code, right? How we are advancing it same way, right? Just we are manipulating something. So that so what is the way of manipulating? So that it will just I uh, mean easier our work. It will just in case some repetition is need to be there, we can easily do it. Okay. The next thing is that in the existing code, what do we need to do? So at the rate test here, you need to give something called data provider, right? And here you need to give the method name, whatever method you have given in the data provider. So that's why you are linking it in the double code. Right? So that part, first part is done. Right? So if you go to my slide also, right, I have also tried to mention it, right? The next part is that you need to define the kind of argument, something argument instead of hard coding it, right? Here you need to pass some argument. So what is my data type? It is kind of string. So, I will be defining something argument one thing called username and then again another string called password and here now instead of hard coding it I will be just calling those argument right. So, now it is argument not the hard coded part right this matching with this and this will match with this. So, every time dynamic value it will take and then I can print it out every time for your validation. So, first thing is that with the help of data provider, I am creating a method get and user and password. Forget about that return type. This is the public method, right? Then I am creating a variable. So, I because it is a kind of uh, <coughs> row and column matrix, right? I need to define the object return type and data combination. I will that variable I will go for every iteration. I am just going the different setting the data. So, username 1, password 1, for iteration 2, it will be username 2, password 3, like that, because we have my hair row is 3, right? And then, I am definitely need to return it, right? Because I that, that value I will be entering it, that is return, return time is coming as an object. Because return is, I am returning the value called that variable. And that one, that part is done, in the existing test cases, you need to use data provider equal to the method name, whatever you have given at the data provider. Then, you need to parameterize, sorry, you need to pass some argument, right? that you need to match it how many number of user elements you want to interact and then you will be just passing that matching that one instead of hard coding it now if you want to run it you can run it from here testing xml that does not have any problem 
in case your test uh, class is mapped to it same way <coughs> so you can see how easily you can run it with the different combination of data set <coughs> because test change is very very weight I mean very uh, very important feature is available guys so one thing I can say if you know test ng if you know Maven, if you know Java, I forget about Selenium, you can learn REST or SOL in quick span of time. Because three things will be used in the REST or SOL from the API testing standpoint, right? The Postman is a manual tool, right? Just like the other kind of tool or application, it will be there. But if you know these three things, TestNG and Maven and the Java concept, you can easily learn the REST SOL by yourself. If you just invest like uh, 20 hours there by yourself without taking anything 10 hours right you can get, get the knowledge of the rest so if you are clear on this thing. <coughs> so that is the reason I always tell people right go with Selenium with Java test ng maven framework right because everything those everything will be used in the rest framework as well mostly just the concept really for the API testing but those will be used yeah. so you are just going for the second iteration <coughs> now it will try to go to the third iteration so you could see here the method name is getting called and every time data is also getting called what data it is passing right so that is the way right this thing is giving lot of additional feature you no need to rely no need to customize no need to write any code this thing is giving you those fields, those kind of advantage So it will go for the third iteration, username 3, password 3, right? You could see how easily we can right, run it. The next question is that, right? <coughs> Suppose say I don't want to go for fourth iteration or I want to go for second iteration, so second two times, right? In case you want to go for fourth time, then what you need to do? You just need to change the number of iteration here, right? And you can add one more iteration here. So that is a simple way, right? So that is called two, two different things. One is your... A uh, kind of uh, kind of program code. One is your data provider code, right? So you are not touching the other code. So here you will be giving three. Here I am giving it three, and here I am just giving changing to four, four, right? So now what I think I wanted, to, I I did, right? Right. So in case you want to run it for the fourth time, right? Fourth iteration with the variation of data, but true field, right? You can just update it here. How many iteration you want to do? And based on that, you need to, in case it's two, right, you can remove the other two. Right? So that is the way, right? Without changing here, without changing anything here in the test cases level, right? You are just updating here only. Okay. So if you run it now, so it will be fourth time. It will be run for the fourth different combination of data for the username and password field. In case you want to run it for two times, you can update it the row number two and you can remove the other iteration. It had to be three, sorry. It will be iteration four like that. So that part you can just comment but I can did not correct it maybe. <coughs> hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. It will be based on the type here you can it is string, right? If you do not give anything, right, it will not add to that combination. It will only add the uh, column only, right? So second field. Suppose in case you are not giving anything in the first field, right? So you can just remove that one. And second field will value the entry. It will try to click on the sign in, right? Or both the field you cannot give any. So it will try to go for the blank blank. And then it will click on the sign in button. In case you want to really validate it, right? And it will throw the error. So automatically you can get the benefit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, it will fail the test case, right? No, no, in the real, you, you need... Yeah, it will be displayed like that, right? In case you are just giving, because it is alpha new string, you can enter anything. But in case it's a numeric one, right? In case you are defining something called numeric, right? Because it is an object, right? Right. In case it is kind of, instead of the object, you want to define something called data, right? Suppose, say, I am just giving you example here. Say, 
uh, let's stop it for now suppose say if you define something called instead of here uh, so if you declare something called integer right so it will fail right let's try to run it now okay so it will definitely it will give you suggestion right but yeah you need to just kind of inspect you need to spend some time why it is failing right but it, you could see now it should get failed because here it is coming as a string format but here you are expecting the integer format so that's why it will not match it will fail everywhere right you could see and it is not running the other one because it is a hard coded failure right you could see now the problem is right method matcher exception right because the method whatever you are defining that method is not expecting you could see here that is the thing is coming you need to analyze it what is the problem is coming index one like all this stuff right argument yeah you could see the username java red lang string is coming password is not matching like that the id field is not matching index one So no need to in case you are doing anything right. It will most of the time it will throw the error if, if during the compilation itself, right? It will throw. You can see here some red mark will come, and then this is called compilation error. You can fix it. Otherwise, it will go in the runtime error. Okay. So that is the data provider. So are you clear on the difference on the data provider and the parameter? Because well, that is the very very common thing everybody will ask. So then you, know, you can they can get to know that what is their concept. Yeah. Yeah, GB. <coughs> um, I think so. Oh, I might be. Uh, Mm, in the same class, but yeah, I did not try it in the other class. But in the Excel, right, we can let's see the in case it is working or not. From the Excel, it will be possible. So it is kind of slowly we are progressing it, but from the Excel, right, it will be possible that multiple class you can go for the same data, right? If that is your question. It is possible definitely in the real time. It is possible, right? So suppose say your other class is also your like you need to just go for the path. Suppose say you you are you are having three different class. One class is for your validation of the user ID password. Second class is just kind of searching the product, but definitely login should be there. And fourth, third class is your for the kind of booking the payment. So here here also you need to go for the login, search the product, and you go for the payment, right? Because automation, right? You it cannot directly go to the payment. In the manually you already open the page, right? That is the reason you can go it. But autom automation, everything will be from the scratch level. So first you log out the application, then your test case is done. Next test case again you will open the browser, again you will log in, again you will search the product, again you will add to the cart, again you will do the payment, and again you will log out. So that's why automation will, in, will be there in the real time. So that is the difference between the manual and automation. Because because you do not know which browser which for you are there, right? So most of the time it can fail. That that is the reason in the automation everything will be from the scratch. In case you are having some ID right to read tip, so you are taking the ID again. You are opening the opening the page, right? And again you are that is the better way, right? I must say that's why you should try the automation. You should not start from the middle way, because there is a huge chance will be that it will fail in case it is not able to find it. Okay. Any other questions? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it is object, right? It is object here. It is does not it defining that what data type. It is object, so it will be based on your real kind of thing you are giving in your test case level, right? Yeah, it will try to match it. Yeah, more flexibility, right? Need more flexibility. So that that concept is different, right? Data provider will be for your kind of um, multi, uh, same set of test cases, multiple data variation, and your uh, kind of parameterization will be 
right same test sorry multiple test case with same set of data data set so that is the main important is to concept the next one is very very important it's called listener guys <coughs> okay so listen means you are know, you know the meaning right same way also it's mean right so your listener means you are kind of listening something okay so sometime user wish to modify the behavior of test ng during script development and that can be done with the help of the interfaces so this interfaces which help the user to do so are known as listener as the name suggests listener primary task is to listen to an event define and react according to that the main purpose for which listener are used by the programmer is to create log and create the custom report according to the specific scenario defined so these are the different listeners available but mostly we will be using that i test listener or i should listener okay so listeners a test ng listener always extend org dot test ng dot it listener i test ng listener and test ng provider as a bin listener type okay so these are the primary listeners will be using mostly i test listener i have listed it but yeah i do not use much them even also okay so each listener have specified method that are overridden because this is the interface right you have to override it you already learned the concept of the java right whatever mostly we have covered as part of java that but you will learn it here right in the real time so listeners in case you are trying to implement it right because the class to interface you have to always implement it right so in case you are implementing a interface so there will be all the undefined method will be there in the interface right you need to define it here so that you can add some body right you can add some code so i test listener is one of the most commonly used listener in selenium web driver the programmer simply needs to implement the i test listener interface and override all the method of this interface in order to use it it makes the call before and after every test present in the suit right every test each and every test there are several method on start it will be called during the starting of the test on finish it the starting of the kind of part right on test start so on start and on finish it will be your suit level and the remaining is on test start failure skip success it will be your test level right and i test listener is only having two methods on start and on finish right so we will try to implement it and we will see how the listeners is changing the game here right so let's first first try to create a <coughs> let's comment out everything here <coughs> so let's uh, first try to create a uh, listener class so i'll go here and i'll create a listener class normal class right no need to select the public static main void also you need to give it suppose say test listener that is the cast i want to create it no need to select public static void main also here i'll be implementing i test listeners okay that class here because i need to implement i test s t n e r so immediately you could see error error message right so it will give you suggestion that you need to implement all the undefined method right so here you can implement it right you could see first importing it then once import is successful you have to you could see or add unimplemented method whatever i have written there right all the method you need to unimplement it right so you can see on test start on test success on test failure on test skip right on on start and on finish so on start and on finish will be your kind of uh, suit level but other you will be your test cases level right so here you can print out something called let's try to print out so that it will be giving you the result also accordingly right so i so something called uh, want to keep test ng test method 
started right and i want to concatenate with the variable right that is the variable you don't need to change anything because that is coming from the interface right so that variable dot gate of name right the test case is the name gate of name it is coming from its result right that is the its result class its result where is the name here so similar way you can write in case it's success you can give it like the method uh, passed right so in case method is getting failed you can give it like failure like my test case method fail like that so this is the three is the test level right and the next one i can give it at the method level sorry at the suit level so test ng uh, mm, i can give it here uh, test ng uh, suit started right test ng suit started so you can see the variable got change here right for these two that variable is called context because it will be test suit level so similar way you can give it right and that sorry it will be get not test name it will be get name get dot get name you can give it test name whatever method is there you can use it not be a problem so for the finish also i can give it test ng suit completed so that part is done right i have created listener class right and i have implemented that listener class to the its listener so that i want to get all the required method whatever is available in the its listener class okay So that part is done. Second part, right? I'll be writing some test cases here. So say, let's go to the uh, uh, eight, right? Test seven. Let's try to create some test cases from the first session. Same way. This is the two test cases I want to take. Right? So. and you can fail one test case right so two test cases there one test case will be fail right because the assertion is not matching so this two part is done so this is the two two part is done then next part if you want to implement the listener what is my next part so you can do it in two way right so you can create a class then implement all the unimplemented methods same way after that you can create your own test ng class right sorry test ng class and then you can write your code then third thing is that right you can go to the <coughs> right user need to implement the above listener in the normal java test ng class before class right so you need to use right at the rate test annotation where there is there right and you can use here right listener okay so here at the class level you can do it so that automatically all your class you can implement it so how can you do it so it will be at the class level so all your method will be impacted at the rate listeners listeners here you need to give the method name where listener class is there right what is the package name that is your package name dot what is your class name you could see that cl test class name is coming right listener class name is coming the dot class that is the thing you need to define it in your test class now you need to import the listener class from the org dot annotation so that is the one part right now you can run the class from the xml file now if you run it from the xml file right we can run it that is the one way and see the differences because we are trying to override the 
test ng behavior, right? With the help of dictionary class. <coughs> Yeah, be based on the override, it is listening, right? Based on the override, it is listening first, then it's working. That is the reason. You're overriding, but it's listening. It is not working previously. You are doing the thing, so it is listening accordingly, and then it is interacting. You could see here, right? Two test cases got passed, one test case got failed, one passed. So what is the output is coming? You could see test ng suit started, right? Right? This is the suit name is coming first. Okay. Because it is suit level activity, right? That is the suit level one the context whatever is context was there right that is the suit level right so, uh, only it will learn only suit level then you could see test ng method started right because every time method will be started it will run right and then your output of the test method then test method got fail in case it is a fail it will work in case it is a pass the pass part will be uh, working right after that again test methods two and output for thing and test method pass so here for the test method two fail is not executed because it is pass so that is the reason it already it will work based on the past failure of the script and after that this suit is completed are you getting the thing so we are implementing the thing not reporting right suppose say in case i want to add something i want to capture the something right in the uh, during the failure only i want to take the screenshot so you can uh, write some method here right for the fail during the failure it will capture the screenshot so that's how you can override it. So a lot of benefit is there. I will be covering in the upcoming session. But that is the main objective. Right? You will be not be writing the uh, capturing the screenshot method. You will be just updating it here only. Whenever it will be fail, that time I will capture the screenshot. But I don't want to capture the screenshot for the past or other part. Maybe. Like similar way, you can just uh, override it. So that is the reason listener will play the role. So that is the one way, right? We can do it. There is another way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it will be implemented there, and whenever you will be giving that one, right? The output will be generated, right? That time you will be getting the link or all this stuff, right? Suppose say you can you want to add the link, so I'll be uh, I mean providing those video, right? Two videos is already there for that one framework part, POM part. You can just go through, and then where everything will be there, starting with the page of the model right and then report ng extend report uh, logger log 4 g everything will be there okay yeah <coughs> so that other thing will be implemented so nothing new thing will be implemented most of the thing will be only whatever will be learning slowly like that but here only the page of your model concept then your log 4 j extend report report engine that is the new thing otherwise all the same way we trying to implement it So second way, right? I have written here. Okay, in case you forgotting something, just go through my uh, thing thoroughly. So if, as I have written, so for me, I I don't need to go. Sometimes when I forgot it, if I forgot it, I also go through it, right? But in case you go through for two to three times, you also get to know where I need to really go it, right? So it's very very simple way I have tried to create the slide as well. Another thing is that, right? The same way you need to uh, no need to use the listener annotation right so i'll be removing the listener annotations here i will commenting out then how can you implement it right you need to go to the suit uh, testing XML file you can add it right listener stack right so i'll copying that listener stack here this is this is the two way you can implement it whatever way you want right After the suit name, before the tag name, you can just add it. So here it will be listeners and here it will be package name. So what is your package name here? This is your package name and this is your class name. No need to give the dot class. I think that will work. Let's see. So same way it will be running. It. 
yeah right but the objective is still same but this is the two way one is whatever you want that will be driven based on your requirement right that time no one can say that that is the fixed part I have always used it right but I mean based on a requirement based on your test case type based on the other areas based on your kind of um, practice right all this stuff you can do it whatever way you require but the same way it will behave it right so this means what in case this case is passed that relevant method will be called whatever you are writing it in case this case fail this case skip the relevant thing will be run because I don't want to run always for all the part right right for the pass fail all this stuff no I don't want to do so for pass one I have a specific situation for the failed one specific one uh, for the skip to one a specific one like that so that is the way this learner will play very very important role in the real time also so whenever real time also will be implementing all the right uh, report ng extend report will be using through the if anybody will be capturing the screen so it will be using through on this discerner only <coughs> Any questions guys, is it clear how it is listening first and how it is we are able to override the default configuration of the test engine with the help of listener. <coughs> okay. The next part is that how we can re-execute write the failed test case in test engine with the help of listener and another listener called I read the analyzer. So in the I think I think few uh, minutes back you already see how we can execute the test case without the listener class there is an option available right called test engine dot fail right fail test engine something called that test engine I will fail dot XML in case something is getting failed you will able to do it so let's comment out the listener part here first now if you want to run it here It will run both the test cases and it one test case will fail. But in case it is this test cases get fail, right? I want to run the fail test case three time, four time, five time, right? Without uh, test engine dot XML fail, you will to manually run it. But here I want to run it, right? Automated way, right? Fail test case I can give attempt for three time, four time like that. Suppose you can create one more method, right? Uh, test three. So both the test cases will be passed and one test case will be only fail. See here, give it three and. So how can you run only that uh, time for the fail test case only, right? Not the, for the past one. So here also we'll be creating one uh, class first, right? Called retry listener because I'll be implementing that I retry analyzer li interface, which is also kind of listener. So let's create a new method class here called. Uh, and here similar way I will try to implement it I return analyzer so here you need to add all the unimplemented method so the same line of code whatever I have written you need to just use it so this method will be failed because of many reasons like uncertain behavior application network issue to overcome the false failure user might need to execute the failed test cases multiple times it can be 5 times 10 times whatever is required but in case it is real failure then you can analyze it and you can log a defect but suppose that due to the internal issue right, in case this case fail you can try for 3 times might be passed because that is not the real failure right so when a test fail the a retry method gets called and the retry method will result in either true or false right in case user have a test method that is annotated with i retry analyzer along with at the rate test so based on the result from the retry method at the rate test method decide whether it will try or not okay so here will be same way we just already implemented it will give some precondition and the post condition that the kind of kind of uh, minimum and the maximum try right you can give it start with 0 1 3 like that so it will go from 0 1 2 3 4 5 like it will go for 6 iteration right and if the current try less than max try until it is matching right it will try again and again 
and it, it, in case it is returned true it will stop there otherwise it will return false so that is the same line of code i'll write it here no need to understand much so just try to understand how we are just implementing it okay because there is no uh, much code is there because just simply kind of uh, same thing right we are not adding any method here you could see that same method i'll be calling it but here i can because of yeah because of any internal internal problem right because of any internal problem it can get fail and it will try to run it yeah right so i i want to run it i suppose the implicit weight failing suppose the method element locator is not there but suppose i already mentioned another thing right file is open or maybe internal connection was lost right maybe for five seconds ten seconds so it will run two times so ten seconds not come after ten seconds it came right so that you can you can just uh, uh, just right the add it so it will work right okay so here you can see what is the problem here i think okay need to add one more column okay so i am given uh, zero and i can oh, i want to maybe i can give it one also that not be a problem i can give it one i can give it three so it will try for three times right so that's why you can set it how many time you want to do it so until the current retry get at the max time it will try it right either it is two once fall so that is the second part i am doing it then what is your third part third part you need to just at the whatever test case you want to execute it right you need to give it right at the day test case level so um, let's see if i have written here no i did not return it so you need to go to that test cases level right and you need to give something called test level here you need to give retry r e t r o i analyzer analyzer equal to whatever class you are calling it right you need to just give the class name what is the class name retry analyzer that class name original class name dot it's similar way same whatever class you want to execute it you just have give it so in case you are not giving it will not work right in case it's giving but in case this case is getting passed it will not work right it will be only one run for exit one time whenever this case is getting fail it will only run for three times whatever minimum maximum condition you are giving it right based on the condition so here one and three so one two and three three time it will run okay. so now if you want to run it from here let's see how it is working in case i am not doing any mistake so that is the thing maybe i can do some mistake as well i need to correct the code yeah you could see total three test cases run right but it ran for five times So other two thing is getting skipped. In case you know that some same reason, right? It will skip. Otherwise, it will try to execute it. So that is the intelligence from the test engine. We do not no need to worry about that. You could see, right? Output for this method one. So test cases one run for three times because mix maximum condition I have given one two three three iteration, right? And when test case will fail only that will run for that time. But pass test case only will run it, right? In case you want to pass the test case, you could see. Right, it will not run. It will run only one time. So as soon as test case is getting fail, and based on the condition you are giving, that will run maximum that time. In case you are giving five, five right iteration one to five or zero to four, so it will run for five iteration. So that of the condition you are just hard doing it only one time, and based on that it will run it right. So it will not run definitely in case the test case is getting fast. So that is the internal logic. So you no need to worry about that. That is the internal logic of the listener interface. we are not designing anything so that is already developed by the test ng just we are trying to call that interface and we are trying to give the condition here means min and max suppose if case give 0 to 6 so it will be run for seven time in case any test case got fail now let's fail it again and let's see three test case is running for nine time two pass pass test case and one fail test case for seven time so that's why whatever condition you can give it right so that's your choice 
and it will vary based on the organization to organization and based on the project to project right based on the customer to customer now that is the logic here right you could total nine right skip six put pass total nine method run right so that is the beauty of the i retry analyzer right i retry analyzer listener right so these are the thing i already mentioned in my presentation also so these are the two thing will be used most right one is the i test listener one is the i retry listener okay any questions guys is it clear right are you able to get the thing right because this part are not very very easy <laughs> you need to practice little bit so that you can get the confidence because i already mentioned a b c d part already done now we are going to frame the sentences and after that you will be build a page okay is it good guys as of now any questions anyone all good okay okay the important topic i will cover it here right which is called the parallel test execution right so i was telling from the first that what is the main importance of the selenium right so i was covering that multi threading part you can remember right the multi threading part right the concurrent execution the parallel execution right so that is called the multi threading so here <coughs> we will try to implement now in the actually how with the help of thread count we can do the parallel execution <laughs> okay so parallelism or multi threading in software terms is defined as the ability of the software operating system or the program to execute multiple parts or sub component of another program simultaneously test engine allow the test to run in parallel <coughs> or multi threaded mode this means that based on the test suite configuration different thread are started simultaneously and the test method are executed in them so this gives a user a lot of advantage over the normal execution mainly reduction in execution time and ability to verify a multi threaded code so parallel execution is vastly used by the qa industry for functional automation testing this feature helps qa to configure their test right to be executed easily in multiple browser operating system simultaneously Test engine provides an auto-define XML file, which is nothing but the test engine XML file, where user can set the parallel attribute to method, test, or class. And by using the concept of multi-threading of Java, one can set the number of threads one want to create for parallel execution. So that is the thing you need to do it. In the suit, write name whatever you are giving. After that, you need to give parallel equal to method name or test, and then the count, thread count, whatever how many thread you want to use it. So that is a simple thing you need to use it. Okay, let's comment out the code first here. So let's copy some code for the parallel test execution the real time. So here you could see, I have written some test cases. One test case is like entering username password, right? Opening the Facebook page and entering the username and password field and getting the title and quitting the page. So that is a simple test case. I have written. I want to execute it. Okay, this is my first test case. The second test case is also with the Chrome browser. I want to open the Facebook page. I want to get the title. Third test case, I want to open the Google page. With the help of the Chrome browsers, and I want to open it and maximize it, and I want to just get the title, right? And the fourth test case is here. You could see here. Uh, also, with the help of the Chrome driver, I want to open the ready page, right? But I think one test case I have added for uh, uh, Firefox browser. Chrome browser, Chrome browser. Yeah. So this test case is for Firefox browser, right? You could see the Google page is Firefox browser. So three test, four test cases. One is for Facebook, one is for Facebook page open and entering something, one is for Google page, one is for Reddit page. 
and the Google page I want to launch it with the help of the Firefox browser right and other three test cases with the, that's why you can different segregate multiple browser whatever is required so we are doing the testing parallelly with the help of the different browser at the same time right now if you want to run it from the test in Excel file so what will happen now it will run test cases one by one because we are not doing implementing the parallelism feature as of now right so it will run for test cases based on the alphabetical order one by one so it will take some time right it might take five a minute ten minutes like that but in case you want to do it man mal, I mean kind of parallelly you can use some threads suppose say four test cases I can use three threads so the three test cases can be picked up by three threads after they are completed and another thread will pick up the remaining test cases right so definitely thread count should be like within the range of five not more than that because sometimes it might not work in the real time so but you can give it five so that it will be at least uh, in one in, in, in a single thread it might take 10 minutes time but in case you are using five thread right your this exit might take to three to four sec four minutes time you can definitely save more than 50 percent of the effort you will not able to visualize all this but it will work and it will just show you the result So here it will run one by one because we are not implementing just we are writing the test case for multiple browser but we are trying to execute it one by one because we are not using the thread concept or parallelism concept as of now so it will be Chrome browser and then Firefox browser at the same time not be a problem but it will be one by one Yeah, ready page is having lot of I think images. That is the reason it's taking some time to load the page. still taking time to load it but anyway it will just uh, run one by one all your test case for different browser right it will run it once one test case is executed then it will go for the next and it will go for the next like that uh, okay one done you could see the um, uh, title here it will, then it will go for the next one based on the alphabetical order, right? <coughs> so it will take some time, right? Definitely, it will take some time because you want to execute it them isolated mode in one to one, one after another. So once execution is finished, result is done. It will display in the right span, right? What how many test cases passed, fail? What is the time taken? It will go for the second one, and the third one, fourth one, like that. now only one done then it will go for the second third fourth like that yeah you could see the chrome driver is launching again
सेकेंड डिस्क इज डन थर्ड डिस्क इज इट विल गो It will go for the last disk, right? Which is in the different browser might be Chrome browser. In case everything is Chrome is set up. In case any problem, you need to fix the problem for the Chrome browser because you know, right? Every time browser version got changed, and you need to update your driver accordingly, right? So that is the thing you need to maintain constantly, guys. You could see now the Chrome, uh, Chrome, sorry, Firefox browser is getting open. So it is trying to launch the Firefox browser and it will open the whatever URL is there, it will, URL will open it and it will perform the operation, it will close it and then successfully your result will be displayed. So it might take some time, right? Yeah, but in case you want to do the concurrent execution or simultaneous execution or parallel execution, you need to implement that concept called which kind of uh, multi-threading, right? You need to use multiple thread and the map like parallelism concept. So execution your depending on your uh, system performance and other stuff it will be driven right for my system uh, because of the some slowness it might because of the these are the main thing um, okay it worked right So it's work right, but so four disk has got to work. One is the Chrome browser, one, uh, three is the sorry, three is in the Chrome browser, two is in the Firefox browser, right? So that next question will be that I want to do it in parallel way, right? Then how can you do it? So suit level, right? You are giving some name here, right? So what you need to do, you need to add something called parallel equal to methods. right and again space here thread count thread count equal to suppose say I'm giving three so three to three thread will come into the picture that is a simple line you have to write it you could pair you could see suit name whatever suit name then parallel p or l l e l in case you are doing single method it will not work equal to methods right then thread t h r e a d hyphen count equal to three so the three thing it will run and definitely a my is in faster now if you run it right you could see the differences you could see here three browser starting at the same time right are you able to see it because three thread is working, right? Now it is not like a one to one. Three disk is starting, is trying to do it parallelly. So once three disk is done, completed, right? As I mentioned the example, suppose you are having ten suites, and now you want to uh, give seven resources. So seven resources will go for seven suites first, and then whoever is completing first, then they will pick up the next suites like that, right? So your overall productivity will be much faster and definitely you can do it at the same time multiple browser and OS combination also right? so in case you are having any virtual machine where other Linux or Mac machine is there you can try for them also right so it will be parallel you can see one disk has got executed another so it will be parallelly right you will not able to visualize everything but your disk case is getting executed right you could see <laughs> Right, already opening the same time, closing. Right, you can see the how fast is getting executed. At least compare like must say that it's fifty percent time you can save it in case you are multiple set. So that is the reason nowadays everybody is looking for optimization. Right, so how can you optimize the cost? How can you optimize the time? 
because cost and time is the most important parameter right for every project right whenever especially for the testing life cycle right the developer might definitely get delayed the project but testing at that at the end right you could see that multi parallelly right it's so gradually is also coming so but at the testing sometime right testing team need to uh, i mean see your your timeline is 3 month for the execution but you are getting only 1.5 month so definitely you need to uh, think for some alternative way right uh, so approach through which you can how you how you can you can uh, write uh, with the minimal uh, effort with the minimal schedule right you can execute everything so that is the reason sometimes you go for the risk based testing approach with the based on the criticality priority severity all this stuff the application other stuff which is not possible to execute everything right so your objective will be that you will go for the high prone area right the defect prone area and the critical area and definitely you would want to uh justify that right most of the thing is will be working fine but in case definitely your timeline is short right you want to uh, uh do not cover 100% coverage might be cheap but your objective is still that with the short time short thing right you want to cover most of the thing right okay so that's how you can do the parallel testing now you could see that all the four test cases is executed with the less time right i am not saying that how much time but definitely we can say 50% of the time okay let's give me two minutes to recapture the thing then we will take the questions here so this is the um, second topic for the test ng part right where you already see how you can include exclude the group with the help of the include and excluding part in case you know uh, you want to execute everything with some name right you can give that name then dot star mark parameter is then used whenever you want to use uh, execute multiple test cases with the same set of value data right you in case some test cases is getting fail right it is not always possible to run every all the test cases again and again but you need to run the test case only the fail test case only so you can do it without listener class there's option called test ng hyphen fail dot xml with the help of that apart from that you can use the i read analyzer through which you can run your fail test case multiple times data property is nothing but same test case if you want to run it right with the multiple variety of the data you can do it with the help of data provider so that is the features available in test ng listeners right there is a i test listeners available Uh, through which you can just uh, override the test ng features right you can uh, implement something on start on finish which is at the should level other method is your test case level right you can implement in two way one is at the rate at the uh, class level you can add it at the rate listener and another way you can add the listener tag in the test ng should level right and then the last one is called the parallel test execution in case you want to run it Uh, multiple uh, way right multiple browser multiple operating system with short span of time with the help of parallel uh, multiple thread you can do it so that it will definitely say overall save the cost and time of the uh, overall execution so that's all from today's session thank you